Hi, I'm Janice Rombeck, Supervisor Dave Cortese's Communications Manager, and we're here today with Supervisor Cortese and Tay Vu, our colleague, uh, who's going to be answering your, your phone calls with questions, and then Supervisor Cortese will answer your questions on COVID-19. Um, so please call in. The number is 408-287-3787. There's also 292-2959. It's 287-3587. So, um, since before we start getting calls, um, can you update the public about what's going on right now in terms of numbers? We're in the so seventh week of shelter in place. And, um, you know, what, where, what kind of situation are we in right now with cases? in our county. Well, thank you. Thank you, Janice, and uh, thank you for doing this. And, and I want to thank v Viet Bay TV for creating the opportunity for us to have an hour every Saturday to help inform the public. And um, this goes beyond um, even the large viewership of Viet Bay um, in the multicultural community because we're uh, live streaming and uh, we are um, on Facebook Live, I believe, so you can watch what's going on. Uh, some of you um, uh, already are out there and we'd love you to call at 287-3587 or 408-292-2959. Um, COVID-19 continues to be a major challenge, not just for this community, but for the state of California where we now have over 40,000 confirmed cases. Of course, the experts believe there may be many more cases than that because we haven't still been able to test as many people as we would like in the state of California uh, due to a slow start and, and a slow effort by the federal government in providing us test kits that's still haunting us, that's still causing problems now f uh, for the past six or seven weeks. Um, although tests are increasing mm -hmm. pretty dramatically. So um, the good news is uh, testing is getting more frequent. Um, the bad news is there's 1,612 deaths uh, as of last night, and unfortunately that number keeps going up and we're likely to have a higher number um, the next time we get a report uh, this evening or early tomorrow morning. That's at the state level, at the county level. Um, our numbers uh, obviously are, are smaller numbers, but we still have 98 deaths um, and 1,344 confirmed cases um, just in the city of San Jose alone. Uh, there's, I think, over 1,800 cases in the county of Santa Clara. Once you get beyond the city of San Jose into the other 14 cities, um, we are having a lot of problems with clusters of infection in nursing homes, wherever we have seniors with assisted care and assisted living and they live close together. This has been extremely challenging for the medical professionals to try to figure out how to um, save them from severe uh, illness, in, mm -hmm. including, of course, the COVID-19 disease, which could be absolutely deadly, especially for seniors. So um, we do have a few less people in hospitals um, as of yesterday than we did the day before, but it's still 176 hospital beds, which is a lot of hospital beds. We don't keep that many hospital beds open normally. When we don't have a pandemic, we have maybe 200 hospital beds available in the entire county. So 176 beds occupied right now is, is a lot. It takes up a lot of the hospital bed space in the county. Um, I know there's been over 21,000 people tested here in the county. That's much better than where we were just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the interesting thing is about one out of every 10 people who's tested uh, turns up to be positive with the virus. Um, and you know that's a pretty significant number especially as, as vicious as, as this virus is um, and how, how it attacks uh, people's lungs and their, uh, even their pulmonary system. Uh, we're hearing that uh, there's any number of severe medical complications that come about. So that's a little bit of what we know currently, Janice. And, uh, you know, obviously information is breaking, um, you know, by the hour. And perhaps uh, we'll talk a little bit later about the most recent information that we're getting from the coroner's office about um, uh, tests that they are doing there. Looks like we have a caller I think in. Is we that... have a question, Tim. Uh, yes. Um, go ahead. Um, um, 
Hello. Hello. Uh, go ahead. Um, ask your question to uh, the supervisor. Hello, um, let me see. Yeah, you're going to have to repeat the question for us, Tevu, because we can't hear from the distance. Everyone's physically distancing here, so our phone system is six feet away, our moderator's six feet away, I'm six feet away, and the callers are calling in from all over the county, as I understand it. So just go ahead and repeat the question back to us when you have a chance, okay. Tevu, and we'll answer it as best we can. I think I heard the question as um, walk-up testing. Are there places that you could just walk up and be be tested? And um, that's probably that's a good um, a good question because we get that a lot um, now that that testing is advanced a little more and we have a few more people, or a few a lot more um, uh, testing kits and that sort of thing. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, as testing has increased, we've found that more and more options are being offered. For example, the Milpitas Clinic, uh, which is a Valley Medical Center clinic, a county clinic, um, a very modern facility in, in the community of Milpitas, um, it offers testing every day uh, for at least three or four hours a day. Um, that is uh, prioritized first for Milpitas residents, but I understand they're moving toward opening that up for other people. There is uh, there are a lot of commercial mm -hmm. testing facilities, uh, most of the same places where uh, people would normally go to get blood workup, uh, like uh, LabCorp or Quest mm -hmm. or someplace like that. You need a doctor's referral to go over there. So if you have symptoms or you think you have an issue, you've been exposed, you're concerned about it, you should call your doctor and get a referral to a commercial lab if you can. Um, there's a few tests that are being done at the Santa Clara County um, public health laboratory that's not really a walk-up situation because they don't have very many mm -hmm. tests that they can do each day but um, if you want information about any of that you can call my office at 408-299-5030 408-299-5030 at least Monday through Friday there's somebody answering the phones there um, 9 to 5 p.m. and um, if they don't pick up we'll get back to you right away uh, we have a little bit of a reduced staff ourselves because of, of the COVID situation. Now, um, Verily, Verily, which is a commercial uh, operation, uh, has a project going at the Santa Clara County Fairgrounds where you can drive up and be tested. That's right on Tully Road. You can drive up and be tested. Um, they were going through a pre-screening process on their website. You can do a Google search on Verily, V-E-R-I-L-Y, and you will come up with their enrollment process, but I understand now uh, they're taking people uh, much more freely mm -hmm. that, that drive up, and the testing turnaround time is, is very short. Uh, if you're still unsure, or if I confuse you, uh, just, again, call the office, um, and we'll be happy to send you an email link that has all the information on testing facilities throughout the county, and I think more and more you're gonna see an increase in the number of walk-up or drive-up testing facilities as we continue to expand our ability. Right. I think um, Dr. Cody Hello. said on a briefing on Friday that there's still there's still a priority list, so that um, you want to have those with Sorry. symptoms tested first, and she's, they're also looking at um, okay, just, just very carefully at at congregate settings, jails, just, just. Uh, homeless okay. shelters, and um, and places where where people live very closely together. Oh, great! Oh, Dave, um, we have a phone call. Okay, go ahead. Um, answer. Um, ask supervisor. Yeah. For Mr. Cortez, I called a few minutes ago about the situation. Um, I live in Morgan Hill. My name is Chris. And I called Valley Medical. I was there February 20 or March 3rd. And my question relates to getting tested by my doctor in a referral. I've tried to get a referral, tried to get my doctor to test me, and I can't get answers from them. But that they don't even are aware of what's happening. 
and yeah, they get blown up. And that's why I was wondering about the walk-up situation because I don't have a car. Yeah. Okay. Let me try to answer that's the question. The question. You know, is there, is there other options? Yeah. Well, obviously, public transit still transportation still exists. If you don't have a car, uh, you're you're in a tough situation um, compared to some people who still you know have an automobile available to them. But you'll have to probably use public transportation or. Or get a ride if you have a family member that you're close to. It's allowed for them to drive you. Um, that's not a violation of the rules. If it's a family member that's caring for you and trying to get you to the doctor, what I would recommend is that you call my office. I gave the number earlier, 408-299-5030. Don't call right now because it's uh, Saturday. And if, if you're not having an emergency at this moment, and you can call my office Monday, uh, we will put you in touch with Valley Medical Center. Um, we'll have somebody talk to you directly from Valley Medical, um, a medical professional who can steer you to um, whatever testing capability there is at that point. Um, as far as uh, facilities that are in Morgan Hill, I don't have that list in front of me. Um, yes, it is possible. You might have to, to, to get somebody to transport you. Um, 408. He just asked me to repeat the number, 408-299-5030. Yeah, we'll be happy to talk to you. If you call, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, somebody should be in the office by that time, and they'll connect you directly with somebody at Valley Medical Center. And from there, it's, it's between you and the doctors to try to, uh, um, you know, work out a testing location for you. Thank you for calling. So next call, you have another one? Oh, okay, thank you. So one question that, that everyone's been asking is, when will we get back to normal? Um, I know May 3rd, the, this shelter in place order was, um, is effective until May 3rd, which is only about a week away. What's going to happen or when will we know the next steps? Yes, I, I know it's, I've told people that I expect to hear something early to mid next week. Um, and uh, somebody, Somebody challenged me yesterday and they said, well, you must have inside information and why are you saying that? Well, it's not inside information. It's, it's, just, um, it's just a practical matter. The, the current orders only extend until May 3rd, through May 3rd. Obviously, today's already April 25th. So by the time we get to the middle of next week, we're going to be very close to that May 3rd deadline. And I know the public health officer has no choice but to make an announcement as to what we're doing. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting that we will still have some form of shelter in place, at least for a couple more weeks. Um, but we also may have some changes to the orders. And I don't know exactly what those will be. I, we've had a lot of people who have requested that their the new order require masks. I, I don't know if the public health department will do that. We'll find out this week. Um, we've had a lot of people request that construction mm -hmm. workers be allowed to go back to work. We've had a lot of people request that gardeners and landscapers be allowed to go back to work. We've even had people request that certain kinds of recreation where people are distanced, like golf or other forms of sport, I would assume tennis would be like that, where you're, you're just automatically apart from the other people, that the public health department consider relaxing the rules and not banning those activities. So we're all waiting very eagerly to see exactly what they might change. And of course, more than anything, whether or not we can start getting some people back to work and a better idea how long uh, the rest of us are gonna be, you know, stuck in our homes, uh, either working remotely or, you know, praying for our jobs to come back. And we understand as county supervisors just how devastating this is for people uh, who are out of work right now. And uh, we hope uh, anything we can do to help you get benefits, uh, whether it be unemployment or county benefits, uh, we want you to let us know. Um, our number here for, for calls is 408-287-3587. Uh, or 408-292-2959. Either one of those will work and we're happy to try to answer your questions over the phone. Uh, you mentioned masks or face coverings. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, many of the counties in the Bay Area have mandated it, which means it's it's a legal that's, that's a legal mandate, so that it could it 
could be enforced. Uh, why is Santa Clara County not doing that? Well, let me try to explain that by way of a, of a story that just happened recently. I'm going to tell a story about something that happened just a few days ago. Um, we had the good fortune um, in conjunction with the TV station here um, and the Viet Tute charity, which is located along Story Road in San Jose, they, they donated um, thousands of, of PPE, personal protective equipment, including masks, masks, gloves, and sanitizer to the Valley Medical Center Foundation. And if you're interested in doing that and helping the foundation out with a donation, again, please call my office, 408-299-5030. Uh, that's what Viet Tute did. That's also connected with the Viet Bay television station here. And we went down to the Valley Medical Center, to the campus mm -hmm. of the hospital um, with a, a van and the TV station here delivered through their, their van um, thousands of, of uh, pieces of equipment in boxes. When I got there, I was wearing a mask like this. But as soon as I got out of my vehicle and started getting closer to the main building, somebody came up to me and gave me an N95 mask. Mm. And I didn't have an N95 mask ever before. Um, but they gave it to me and said, it's better here if you wear this one. And, and the point I want to illustrate is this. The public health officer is afraid that if everyone starts using N95 masks everywhere, even just around home or taking a walk, then that will be less of those masks available for the hospital campuses, um, for people who are visiting, for people who are uh, frontline healthcare workers primarily, nurses, doctors, uh, and so forth. Um, so these masks are, are just fine for to give you some protection. Um, most of the time and they're not so scarce these are easier to find and I think what Sarah Cody our public health officer is trying to do is make sure she preserves as much of the N95 mm -hmm. mass uh, for the healthcare workers as possible now if those supplies become more abundant I, I think she just might require everyone to wear them we'll see yeah. although what she also talks about is just a simple face covering will help immensely just a bandana a piece of cloth there's a lot of um, YouTube videos that show you how to make your own mask um, very easily with a piece of cloth and or a face covering um, and I see I'm seeing more of people wearing them especially in um, in re uh, going to pick up uh, food in restaurants or grocery stores or pharmacy so it, it doesn't need to be a, a, a surgical time kind of mask but or N95 but it can be just a face covering that will help yeah it's very true and you know that's what the medical doctors in our county are, are saying and the Board of Supervisors interestingly as you know Janice doesn't really have a vote in the matter a lot of people will send me emails mm -hmm. um, and text messages and and they'll call the office and say please please require everyone to wear a mask and uh, I think some of us as supervisors tend to agree that it might be better to just make it mandatory um, but we actually don't have a vote when there's a declared emergency like this uh, Dr. Sarah Cody the public health officer for the county she's the only one who has a vote mm -hmm. and right now uh, that's that's her vote that's what she's saying we should do All right. So people, uh, we should ha ask people to call in at 408-287-3587 or 408-292-5050. Uh, if you have questions, and we'll continue to have a discussion here. Yeah. But if, uh, as people call in, uh, Tebu is here. He's also able to do translation. Uh, if anybody calls in and they'd prefer to speak Vietnamese, uh, not English, Tebu can translate that for you. We do not have a Spanish translation here today, um, but if there's a Spanish speaker, uh, we'll do our best with my limited Spanish to try to respond to you. So um, please call in 292-2959. Um, so with, with the weather warming up and especially the beautiful weekend, this weekend, um, people are asking, can I go outside? Is it okay to, with my family to, to go outside or go to a park? What? What is under shelter in place? What are those rules? Yeah, those rules um, are, 
you know, I think are very encouraging in this county for people, and I hope people understand. In, in my neighborhood, I see a lot more people walking around, and I see people walking near or onto uh, parks. Um, I also have traveled uh, twice now since the pandemic um, up from my house in the East Foothills uh, over to Grant Park which is one of the county parks, mm. 10,000, it's 10,000 acres, and you can get there by going up Quimby Road or Mount Hamilton Road. Um, there's limited parking there, but the parking lots are still open. Um, there's sheriff deputies and rangers that are there, and you can actually walk all over the park. You can walk the whole 10,000 acres if you want, although it would probably <laughs> take you about a week. It's a very large park. As you know, Janice, there are, altogether there are 48,000 acres in, mm. in county parks. Most of them are open. Um, there's a few areas where there's waterways that are closed off, but, but most of them are open and people are encouraged um, to get out, stay sick. The rules are the same. Stay physically distanced, stay six feet apart. Mm -hmm. um, that's not as important if you're with your, whole, your own household because obviously people in the same household have already come in contact with each other in most cases but you should still try to keep distance. You're setting a good example for others, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's important that people do that. You don't have to wear a mask outside, as we were just talking. You can go to the park. Maybe you can bring your mask in case you mm -hmm. you have uh, a close encounter with another group or something, um, but you can take the mask off and, and walk openly in a county park without worrying about getting sighted or in any kind of, any kind of trouble. So, um, Yes, it, it's something that's encouraged. I think, you know, what's kind of underrated, uh, we don't talk about it much, but you can take a walk um, along just about any, you know, street mm -hmm. or sidewalk. Um, you, you need to keep physical distance, but let's suppose you live in an area and you're not close to a county park and you don't want to drive, you just want to take a walk. Please do so. Uh, walk your dog. If you don't have a dog, walk your cat. <laughs> if your cat doesn't like to walk, which most of them don't, <laughs> not that far, right? Uh, in all seriousness, uh, get some exercise. You know, part of what we know is that when there's illness around like this, anything that you can do to build up your immunity um, is good. And exercise and good nutrition builds up your immunity. So we encourage people to make sure they're eating the right things and getting enough exercise every day. Yeah, I see a lot more people uh, walking about in my neighborhood, and I think part of the reason is they're not in their cars going to, um, you know, long commutes to work. Um, they have the time now to, to get out and, and explore their neighborhoods. So um, this week, uh, Governor Newsom um, talked about some new help for seniors, some new programs for seniors. Um, of course, our older residents, many of them are in their homes and are in the vul vulnerable group where they really can't um, get out a lot. So can you talk about that a little bit? I think one involved restaurants. Yes. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about at the county and the governor's office has um, has, has moved forward with a similar idea is to try to try to reemploy some of the restaurants to get food to seniors and frankly I think they should be trying to get food to other people mm -hmm. who just need food because they've lost their job that maybe they've been out of work for four or five weeks now um, there is food around <laughs> that's the that's an interesting thing here in fact we have farmers as, as close by as Gilroy for example in Morgan Hill um, in other areas like Salinas and Monterey County that are having trouble getting uh, pickers and, and workers to, uh, to pick the crops. They're also having trouble processing those crops because of social distancing rules. Um, so some of those crops are going to waste and uh, we have been working on a plan in our office to try to truck some of that uh, produce, some of that fresh um, produce up here to Santa Clara County and distribute it through distribution centers. Um, the, the governor has called for a first in the nation program that will ask community restaurants to actually prepare meals, hot meals, that will be delivered to older Californians uh, who are isolating at home. 
and he's not just asking for charity they're they're putting some money behind this and trying to create a fast track contracting process anybody who's dealt with government contracts knows you know sometimes it would take three months or four months to to let out a contract for something like senior nutrition uh, because co governments state and counties are very careful to make sure there's no fraud there's nothing um, being wasted in terms of taxpayer money when they're entering into these contracts and the fact of the matter is uh, the governor has expedited that process so we should start seeing some relief there um, my understanding is you know it's not um, a small amount of money uh, we're talking about restaurants that can get up to uh, 66 dollars of reimbursement per day per senior that they mm -hmm. provide food for and um, what we've been told is the states and the counties will be reimbursed by FEMA, uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, eventually. So uh, that is going forward, and if you want information about that, there's a number that you can call. It's a not an emergency number. It's 211, mm -hmm. and that number is also the number for um, Silicon Valley Strong, I think is mm -hmm. our, our special name that we created for... Uh, the foundations and the cities and the counties that are trying to help people with food and with other needs. That number is 211. You just dial 211 on your phone um, and somebody should help you um, and connect you with um, these kind of resources, whether it's senior nutrition or whether mm -hmm. it's just uh, food for somebody who's very hungry. A lot of people also now, of course, are have lost their jobs and they're needing unemployment insurance. And of course, the state has been overwhelmed with the number of applications. But can you talk a little bit about um, what's going on with that in the state? Yes, um, the, the state has actually um, increased um, the amount of unemployment benefits that are provided to each person. That is not something that we do directly at the county. It is the Employment Development Department. Some people call it the EDD, um, and that is um, where you go if you've you know, been uh, terminated from your job and you're in, entitled to unemployment benefits. But the governor has, uh, as I understand it, uh, increased uh, that program by $600 mm -hmm. per person. Um, so you want to take advantage of that if you if you've been laid off recently even if you're expecting to go back to work soon you should still file the unemployment claim with EDD and try to get that um, that benefit paid to you for the time that you're out of work uh, we have a number at the county that you can call if you're having trouble that is 408-209-2124 408-209-2124 um, we call that our um, assistance line or a CAN line is I think the name of it. It's, a, it's basically a navigational line and it's particularly set up for people who are struggling in terms of something that has to do with their employment. Maybe they didn't get their check, maybe their final check was withheld from their employer, uh, they weren't treated right, they were abused in some way, um, and you know there could be cases like that happening. We know there are, we're getting calls like that and uh, also if you're just having trouble figuring out how to reach um, the EDD we have helped um, two people just in the last two days connect with their unemployment benefits through my office because they could not uh, get a hold of the proper person mm -hmm. themselves and one of the things that the staff in my office will do is, is help you personally to make sure that you're not getting frustrated with that process and again our number is 408 2995030 So one uh, April is a time of, of year when people pay their property taxes also July I believe um, I think the, the board recently um, took action to, to help those people who who need to pay their their um, property taxes but may not have the money right now Yeah the the board of supervisors which I sit on there's five elected officials I'm I'm one of five and we are elected to represent everyone in the county about two million people um, we have done a number of things to try to protect people within the county from any further hardship um, one of the things that we've done uh, recently is um, a, an eviction moratorium so that is still in place until May 31st 
and we'll see if it's extended beyond that but what that means is if you're renting right now and you do not have all your rent maybe you paid part of it but you can't pay all of it um, right now if you let your landlord know that you can't do that because of COVID-19 because of impact on your work or on your income related to COVID um, you will not be evicted you cannot be evicted in this county so you will not lose your your place to live um, more recently um, we adopted um, on Tuesday um, some additional relief for people who actually own property not renters but owners and um, that's on the property tax relief side so anyone who owns property knows or should know that your property tax installment uh, is due April 10th and then again on December 10th and on April 10th which was two weeks ago you should have paid your property taxes if you did not you have a penalty now and what the Board of Supervisors did last Tuesday is we waived the penalties we need you to pay the taxes but we will waive the penalties if you come in and pay those taxes now so um, this is to try to offer some relief to people who own property of course and, and are struggling right now maybe they aren't collecting rent from their tenants because their tenants are struggling uh, maybe they are the landlord of a restaurant and the restaurant is closed so they're having trouble getting rent um, those property owners can delay their property tax payment without having to worry about paying a penalty and again if you have questions about that please call my office the office of Dave Cortesi at 408-299-5030 and we can email you all the information you need about property tax relief we should probably solicit some more calls what's yes. that number again Janice here it is it's 408-287-3587 and 408-292-2959 so the penalty tax is delayed until May 3rd or until when? Property taxes are yes. not delayed. It's only the penalty that is forgiven. It's uh, uh, You can now pay property taxes late w without a late penalty. Okay. And you should pay your property taxes because eventually if you don't pay your property taxes, you will have problems with the county trying to uh, enforce payment against you that's what all counties do and they have to do that of course otherwise certain people would would not pay um, but at least now if you're if you're struggling um, you do not have to pay that penalty but you should contact us to to get the proper information so that you can make the proper um, appeal you can make the proper approach uh, to uh, the property tax collector um, and make sure you stay out of trouble I'm wondering, um, supervisors, city council people, and other uh, board, school board members need to um, shelter in place as well. But how do you get the business done that you're elected to do, the, the public's business um, in these circumstances? And how do you think it's working? Well, the, um, the, the only way that we can do business is the way a lot of people are doing business right now, which is by teleconference and by um, online. Most uh, at the county, we use Zoom and we do the same thing uh, at many other governmental meetings. Um, I'm appointed to many other agencies besides the County Board of Supervisors, like the Transportation Commission, for example. You can participate in those meetings still as a member mm -hmm. of the public. Um, by if you have a laptop computer or even a phone you can get on zoom and um, there's just a simple link that you click and then it'll open up a, a video um, where you can see what's going on at the meeting and then there's a procedure for people to call in much like we're having people call in today um, but it's very organized and people can call in and make public comment and of course the Board of Supervisors will try to get the administration to respond if somebody has a, a specific question but it under the circumstances it's working pretty well um, but uh, you know of course we would love to have people there in person we would love to meet in person ourselves but the county's a big multi-billion dollar organization and it's actually kind of amazing that we can keep it going um, without even having face-to-face -face meetings just by using the technology that we have. What's Alyssa. it been like for you? 
is using that technology and not being with the, the board? Well, the good news about using the technology, it looks like we have a question that came in by phone. The good news about using the technology like Zoom for the meetings is we're saving uh, gasoline mm -hmm. and fossil fuels. You know, you don't have to drive. That's right. Um, I don't have to leave a half an hour or 45 minutes early to get to the meeting. Or if it's in San Francisco, I used to have to leave two hours early. Now I just walk over to my laptop about five minutes before the meeting and I'm there. So some of these things we need to think about in the future because mm -hmm. maybe we should be having more meetings like this in the future even after COVID-19 and we can save our, our environment, save our climate uh, and, and try to reverse mm -hmm. climate change at the same time. But uh, we'll, we'll work on that next. Yeah. Uh, right now we're just trying to work on saving lives. Yes, Tebu. Okay, we have a question. Okay, um, go ahead, um, ask your question. Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, please uh, ask your question and then the supervisor will um, respond to your question. Okay. Can't hear it. Yeah, the question that I have. Okay. Uh, I called a few minutes ago. My name's Chris. I work at the GA office on Center Road as a uh, vocational service worker. We provide their. Dignity on Wheels, Mobile Shower, Mobile Laundry, and also uh, the Medical Band for Valley Medical Center. Would that not be a possible good site to um, provide walk-up service for those that are probably less fortunate, don't have cars, homeless people, things like that? Yeah, I got the question. Go ahead. And, um, thank you very much for the question. If, Probably uh, listeners couldn't hear that, but he was uh, the person who just called was actually a county worker. It sounds like from the general administration or general services agency of the county. The county has buildings all over. The one I work in is uh, on 70 West Heading near First Street and Heading Street. But this caller is working over on Center Road, um, which um, is uh, another place where there are county buildings, and they are doing a lot of work with the homeless um, and um, doing out services. Dignity on Wheels is the name of the program he's primarily involved with. And he was just indicating why not have a mobile testing center there uh, at that facility along Center Road. It might be a lot more convenient for people who don't have um, dependable transportation right now. Um, it could actually be a walk-up facility or a drop-off facility for people that need to be tested. So I appreciate the recommendation. We will take that recommendation back uh, to the county. And, and Monday morning, um, I will turn that idea into the Emergency Operations Center um, Logistical Department. That's the people who are setting up those kind of facilities in the county and, and will um, try to get a good response from the county in terms of possibly using that site. Um, I would like to see mobile sites elsewhere. I have called for using uh, EMTs, um, ambulance type vehicles around homeless encampments and in other areas where people are needy um, and they might not have uh, the, money, the ability to pay for a tank of gas for their car right now or to travel. Um, why can't we use mobile units to go out and uh, help people where they are. So the county executive has been working on that idea um, and hopefully sometime in the near future we will be able to uh, to do more of that kind of work. I believe we have another question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, answer your question. Um. Well, my have okay. to call back. All right, technical difficulties with that call. <laughs> yeah, um, there is so much information out there now about COVID, about um, you know what you should do, what you shouldn't do, where you can get help, how you can help. What's your best advice for getting information about um, about COVID and where we are? Well, there's a couple of websites that you can go to, um, and I strongly recommend doing that. 
the public health website for the county is really, really good. Um, I've been pushing them to give even more information than they're giving, but um, I have to admit they're doing a pretty good job these days. And that website is www.sccphd.org backslash COVID-19. So what you want to do is go to sccphd, that's like Paul Harry David, sccphd.org and actually that will give you a link that takes you into the COVID-19 uh, information pages. So um, do that. If that fails, call my office and we can send you the link for that website, but you should have it handy at all times. And there's also a phone number you can call into the public health department, which is uh, what we were talking about earlier as a CAN, we call it the CAN number. That just stands for Coronavirus Assistance Navigation. And that number is 408 809-2124. I know there's a, a little bit more call volume now, and Taboo's trying to keep up with that. We'll see if he has another question here in a minute. You can just simply repeat the question, Taboo. Hello? Hello? Yeah, go on. Uh, when I will receive that $1,200? I can't hear the question. Okay, the question is uh, when uh, will she receive uh, the federal uh, stimulus oh. checks $1,200? Yeah, our, our understanding is that those checks uh, and electronic transfers are starting to happen now. Uh, people who filed electronically, if you filed your taxes electronically and you provided your your bank number for the refund, uh, you'll automatically get the $1,200 in your bank account. If not, they're going to send it to the address that was on your property tax return last year, in April 15, 2019. So if you moved, make sure you notify the Internal Revenue Service that you have a new address now. They do have a website. If you go to the IRS website, uh, you can uh, get on there and check on the status of your, of your own $1,200 check. Uh, most people are going to receive that check. Um, some people with high income won't receive the check at all, but, but most will. And if you don't get it um, in the upcoming uh, days, um, you should be checking with the Internal Revenue Service and make sure that it was sent to the correct address. You can also call the number that Supervisor Cortez just um, talked about, the 408-809-2124, and they can help you navigate through through the different websites and, and through the a way to check whether your check is, is coming through. All right, looks like we have another okay. question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have your question right now. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor uh, Cortezzi. Um, I was wondering uh, how will COVID-19 affect the census, and are we ex expecting that we will be undercounted and receive less funding uh, for the next decade? Yes, that's a great question. Um, I'll repeat the question back for the for the audience. The question was, how much is COVID nineteen going to affect the census, and how much how important is the census in terms of funding for the county and for the community for the next ten years? Well, it's very important to fill out the census. You can do that right now. You can do that online. You can do it quickly. I've been counted. It took about ten minutes. You, you just answer all the questions. The information is completely confidential. And what that does is it, it makes sure that the number, the population that we, hear in, that we have here in Santa Clara County is fully accounted for. If our population isn't fully accounted for, then for the next 10 years, we're going to get millions and millions and millions of dollars less than we should from the federal government. And remember, in California, we pay more money per person in federal tax dollars than any state in the union. So we want to make sure that everyone is counted so that when they do the formulas based on population to send the money back, they, they give us the right amount because we've, we've told them the right population. The only way we can give the federal government the correct population numbers is if each one of you fills out um, the census form. And like I said, you can do it online. Um, if you are not sure, um, um, 
how to deal with that or if you think uh, you, you haven't been counted, again, you can call our office, 408-299-5030, and we'll make sure to give you the link so that you can get yourself counted right away. It's a good thing to do right now, especially people who are home. Mm -hmm. um, you have a little time instead of the time that you used to drive to get tea or coffee or something, you can now just spend 10 minutes filling out the census. Uh, we estimate for the county alone, just for the county, there's $1.7 billion in federal money that depends on an accurate count um, here, an accurate census count. And so again, the only way we can get that done is with each individual in the county doing their part and taking their time to fill that out. Completely confidential, the information will not be used against you. Yeah, I can assure you that. What is the county doing to help some of the often undercounted populations? Yeah, the county, that's a great question, Janice. The county board of supervisors, um, where I work, we have put up $1 million over and above what the federal government is doing so that we can have our own campaign here um, in the county to make sure that people are counted. Um, we were going door to door. Obviously, people can't do that right now because of COVID-19. That's why we're worried about COVID-19 having an impact. But there are other means of communicating with people and our team at the county is doing everything they can to communicate, including using stations like this, community-based uh, groups, senior centers uh, where people used to mm -hmm. come. A lot of those organizations still have the contact information for the seniors. Everybody's being notified now through whichever form of communication that we have. But of course, there's two million or so people in the mm -hmm. county. I, I don't know exactly if it's two million or 1,950,000 or 2.1 million. That's why we need to fill out the census, not only so that we know, but then we can send a demand to the federal government for the proper amount of money to come back. So another question that comes up a lot is what's happening in our schools? Um, you know, are kids going to be able to go back to school in the fall? Or is what do you think will happen? And, and in the meantime, how are kids keeping up with their schoolwork? Well, most of the schools in Santa Clara County, which is comprised of, um, I believe, about 28 school districts, most of the schools now are at least providing online classes for their students. Um, we do not believe that school will be reopening this year. When I say this year, I mean this school year. Of course, everyone is hoping, hoping that school will be back to normal by the fall. But we don't know if anything is going to be back to normal r right now mm -hmm. because there's still no vaccine for the pandemic. There's no immunity testing that has been sanctioned by the government. And of course, we can see as recently as yesterday that there are still um, hundreds and hundreds of infections and 40,000 cases in the state of California and that number is still growing. So we don't want the children in a small classroom environment where they're seated 30 kids in desks right next mm -hmm. to each other to infect each other. We all know if any, any of you are parents like me um, that you know children go to school, they pick up whatever is at school, they bring it home and even if it's it's the flu or a cold, next thing you know, you have a cluster, you have a whole family that's getting sick. Um, if that happens with COVID-19 and maybe the grandmother or grandfather is living with the children, they get sick, uh, we have serious problem. That's where we're seeing a lot of the deaths uh, mm -hmm. with seniors and with seniors that are in family type clusters. Um, in China, the same thing happened. In Italy, the same thing happened. And I believe the same thing's happening in New York. So if you want to know why the schools aren't opening already, um, that's the reason. And um, it's going to be a slow process, um, but hopefully they'll come out with better testing soon and we'll be, be able to open up the schools at least by fall. Mm -hmm. and in the meantime, um, a lot of classrooms are have gone to distance learning or uh, using Zoom or sending um, homework home with kids and um, if you don't, if, if your school hasn't done that, if you heard, haven't heard from your district, you can call the Santa Clara County Office of Education at 408-453-6651. It's 
6651. That's the Santa Clara County Office of Education. Right, and it's in five languages, so. They have plenty of interpreters there. Um, well, thank you very much for the questions. Tebu, thank you for handling our incoming phone calls. Um, we have just a couple of minutes left and maybe time for one more question. Can you share with them that you have upcoming about um, with the small business construction? Yes, you know, a lot of people are concerned, of course, about uh, reopening the economy, about getting people back to work. Of course, I'm concerned about that too. Everyone at the county is concerned. Um, we depend on small businesses to generate tax revenue. The tax revenue is what we use to run the county government. And when we don't have it, it's bad because we have to cut back services and we have to lay off people and we're trying to avoid that. The county is a big business. It has eight, it has 22,000 employees, 22,000. And last year we had an $8 billion budget. We already know we're gonna have as much as $500 million worth of cuts this year. So we want business to open as soon as possible. On April 29th, we are having a webinar about um, how to work with the county on construction businesses. It's being put on by the Minority Business Consortium, and I am sponsoring it, and several other organizations are sponsoring that webinar. And I believe it is at 10.30 to 12 on April 29th. There is a, a web link that we can give you if you call my office, we'll email it back to you, um, or we'll, we'll email you the flyer for the event. So call the office Monday, 408-299-5030, that's my office, and if you give us your email, we'll send you back um, the information on that webinar. I think it's gonna be a great webinar. I think it'll have a lot of information about how to work with the county. In case you know people who are in business who um, can still do construction work, public works projects like county work or city work is not banned, it's still going on. And so if you wanna participate in that, if you're an electrical contractor or concrete or paving or uh, brick masons or anybody like that, um, this will teach you how to qualify for those contracts. Um, and I think there'll be some information there as to how to get small business assistance from the federal government as well. The, the federal government um, just approved another $400 billion in relief, primarily for small businesses. And we believe that money will start coming uh, very, very soon. So April 29th, it's a Wednesday, 1030 in the morning, Call my office and we'll give you that link. I have one more question. How are we doing as a county? Now we're in the seventh week of this. How do you think we're doing, both with health workers, with residents complying with, with shelter in place? You know, I gotta use this opportunity to thank the people of this county because I'm in a position to see everything. I'm on the board of supervisors and I can see all of the people who are doing so much with, with generous hearts uh, to help other people in this community, uh, people who are complying, people who are working, even though they need protection themselves, like frontline healthcare workers, mm -hmm. or even the grocery workers who check out your groceries. This county is doing so well compared to other places in the United States and other parts of the country uh, it's something that we should all be proud of, that when there's a, an emergency, um, a disaster like this, that you know now we know we can all work together. And thank you very much for that. It's an honor to serve you all on the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I believe there'll be another um, of these town halls next Saturday at the same time, 3 o'clock. Um, again, the numbers are 287-3587 and 292-2959. Thank you. 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock? Next Saturday. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is it 4 o'clock? <laughs> we'll, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll be sending out emails for the proper time. So um, we, we will be back next Saturday. Thank you.